around 300,000 years ago, a mere moment in the vast expanse of history, no fewer than nine distinct species of humans roamed across the earth. Presently, only us, Homo sapiens, persist. This presents one of the most profound inquiries in the narrative of human evolution. What became of the rest? The synchronicity of their vanishing, just as Homo sapiens began their expansion into various parts of the globe, is hardly accidental, remarks Professor Chris Stringer, who leads the Human Origins Division at the Natural History Museum in London. The exact nature of this connection, however, remains unclear. Numerous hypotheses have been proposed to explain the disappearance of our human relatives, yet the evidence remains scarce and somewhat cryptic. Nevertheless, recent research efforts are beginning to offer some intriguing hints. What is clear is that around 40,000 years ago, Homo sapiens emerged as the sole survivor among a once broad and varied assembly of two-legged hominins. Theories explaining their solitary dominance range from the benign, such as Homo sapiens having higher rates of infant survival than their hominin counterparts, or climate shifts driving other species to extinction. Some theories propose a more direct involvement, including Homo sapiens hunting down their hominin kin or engaging in interbreeding, thereby absorbing their genetic heritage. Roughly 300,000 years in the past, the earliest populations of Homo sapiens began to appear in Africa. Though not identical to contemporary humans, they bore a closer resemblance to us than to other members of the Homo genus. Characterized by their tall, rounded craniums and nearly straight foreheads, they lacked the heavy brow ridges seen in Neanderthals, Homo neanderthalensis, and the pronounced jaws found in more archaic species like Homo nalidi. Uniquely, they possessed chins, a feature absent in other Homo species, the reasons for which remain a mystery. A groundbreaking study published in Nature challenged the notion that Homo sapiens originated from a singular location in Africa through a monumental evolutionary leap. By examining the genetic material of 290 individuals, the study revealed that Homo sapiens are the progeny of at least two distinct populations that inhabited Africa for over a million years before converging through multiple interactions. Paleoanthropologists continue to debate, often quite passionately, about the identity of the last common ancestor of Homo sapiens, yet definitive evidence remains elusive. Moreover, the origins of Homo sapiens cannot be traced back to a singular location. Ancient remains of early Homo sapiens found in locations like Jebel Irhoud in Morocco, Omo Kibish in Ethiopia, and Floresbad in South Africa indicate that Homo sapiens emerged from several regions. The timing of when Homo sapiens ventured out of Africa remains a contentious topic. Genetic data points to a significant migration from the continent occurring between 80,000 and 60,000 years ago, yet this was not humanity's initial journey. Intriguingly, a Homo sapiens skull discovered in Apodema, Greece, has been aged at over 210,000 years, suggesting earlier dispersal events. During the period spanning 300,000 to 100,000 years ago, Homo sapiens coexisted with several other Homo groups. Among them were the robust Neanderthals, who adapted to the cold climates of Europe, and the enigmatic Denisovans, who survived in the high altitudes of what are now Siberia and Tibet, and perhaps even beyond. Homo erectus, known for its lengthy legs and dubbed the cosmopolitan species due to its vast geographic spread, continued to roam regions of Indonesia, while in China, Homo longi, or the Dragon Man, made its home. The species known as Homo rhodesiensis, also referred to as Homo boduensis or Homo heidelbergensis, with ongoing debates among scientists regarding its proper name and classification, thrived in the central and southern parts of Africa. Distinct from our lineage were species such as Homo nalidi, possessing a brain comparable in size to that of apes, wandered the wooded savannas of South Africa. Meanwhile, the smaller Homo floresiensis and Homo luzonensis experienced life and eventually extinction on the islands of Flores and Luzon in Indonesia and the Philippines, respectively. Hominin species were likely vanishing regularly, notes Professor Elena Seri, leader of the Human Paleosystems Group at the Max Planck Institute for Geoanthropology in Jena, Germany. The fact that we have persisted is probably more the exception than the norm. For many of the ancient human species, the fossil record is notably limited. For instance, 
Homo naledi is known exclusively from a singular location in South Africa. Other species are identified by only a small number of specimens. In Africa, the cradle of Homo sapiens, Homo fossils, are surprisingly scarce. Our grasp of which other hominins shared the African landscape with Homo sapiens is still forming, mentions Siri. Contrastingly, the record for Neanderthals is rich, encompassing complete genomes derived from their skeletal remains. These kin wandered across Eurasia until roughly 40,000 years ago, existing in diminutive communities. Our knowledge of the Denisovans is more limited, yet the discoveries related to them have significantly altered our comprehension of human evolution. In 2008, inside Denisova Cave in Siberia, Russian archaeologists uncovered several hominin bone pieces, including a finger bone and a fragment of a toe. The frigid climate had preserved some DNA within the finger bone, enabling the extraction of the complete genome of this heretofore unidentified species. Through the analysis of Neanderthal and Denisovan genomes, it has been deduced that they dwelled in small bands and engaged in frequent interbreeding. Estimates of their population, based on mitochondrial DNA, which is passed down from mother to offspring, indicate that at their peak, around 52,000 Neanderthals might have inhabited Eurasia before their numbers started to wane. Some estimates propose a population range of 20,000 to 50,000 individuals. A significant advantage that our direct ancestors seemingly possessed was their larger population size. The smaller population sizes seen in Neanderthals and Denisovans led to much more interbreeding, and this is reflected in their genetic makeup. This limited genetic diversity would have made these groups more vulnerable to diseases, diminishing their chances of long-term survival. In contrast, Homo sapiens existed in larger groups and exhibited greater genetic diversity. The implications of this extended beyond mere resistance to diseases in Homo sapiens it is observed that extensive social networks spanned across vast landscapes. Such broad networks acted as a form of insurance because if you found yourself in an environmental crisis, facing shortages of food or water, you could seek refuge in the territories of distant relatives who were not foes but kin. These networks facilitated the exchange of ideas and innovations, further contributing to their survival advantage, according to researchers like Stringer. This social robustness likely played a crucial role in enabling Homo sapiens to withstand climatic fluctuations that doomed less versatile individuals and species. A study published in Nature in 2022 utilized models to reconstruct the ancient climates and ecosystems inhabited by Homo erectus, Homo heidelbergensis, and Neanderthals, revealing that these species experienced significant reductions in their environmental niches prior to their extinction. A more extensive simulation conducted in 2023, which incorporated data on six Homo species as well as climate and vegetation changes over the past three million years, indicated that later Homo species, especially Homo sapiens, were capable of thriving in a broader range of environments. Professor Axel Timmerman, a contributor to this study and the director of the IBS Center for Climate Physics in Busan, South Korea, posits that Homo sapiens outcompeted Neanderthals, a rivalry that culminated in the Neanderthals' extinction. In a 2020 research article, Timmerman presented a numerical model simulating the dispersal of Homo sapiens out of Africa and their interaction with available food resources. This model was used to evaluate three possible scenarios for Neanderthal extinction. Assimilation into Homo sapiens populations, a massive climate disaster, or competitive superiority of Homo sapiens. According to Timmerman, only the scenario of competitive exclusion adequately accounts for a realistic extinction pattern of Neanderthals. While the model did not pinpoint the exact nature of the competitive edge Homo sapiens might have had, it suggested several possibilities, including superior tool usage, higher offspring survival rates, or the adoption of social hunting strategies. Scientists suggests that a combination of minor advantages may have allowed Homo sapiens to surpass their relatives. It's evident that Neanderthals were highly skilled, yet Homo sapiens might have had just a slight edge.
Minor technological advancements as evidenced in the Homo sapiens fossil record from 35,000 and 30,000 years ago, respectively, could have provided Homo sapiens with the critical advantage needed for their eventual dominance. The expansive social networks of Homo sapiens would have facilitated the dissemination of such technological advancements, he points out. Another theory posits that Homo sapiens integrated their hominin relatives into their gene pool, a hypothesis supported by genetic evidence, though its role in the extinction of other species remains debated. Presently, some individuals in Eurasia carry up to 2% Neanderthal DNA. Astonishingly, geneticists have managed to reconstruct approximately 40% of the Neanderthal genome using sequences from contemporary humans. In Oceania, which includes Australasia, Melanesia, Micronesia, and Polynesia, inhabitants possess between 2% and 4% Denisovan DNA, with some groups exhibiting even higher percentages. Adding to the intrigue is the enigmatic contribution of an unidentified human ancestor who has bequeathed between 2% and 19% of their genetic legacy to the present-day populations in West Africa. In 2020, two researchers from the University of California, Los Angeles, analyzed the genomes of over 400 individuals residing in Nigeria, Sierra Leone, and the Gambia. They deduced that ancient humans had interbred with Homo sapiens within the region at some juncture in the past 124,000 years. This introduces a significant philosophical debate. Have they truly vanished, or do they persist among us in some form? Professor Rebecca Ackerman, a co-leader of the Human Evolution Research Institute at the University of Cape Town in South Africa, posits that the answer hinges on the definition of species, a topic of considerable discussion among paleoanthropologists. While some recognize a wide array of species, others identify far fewer. Prof. Rebecca Ackerman suggests that they were likely not separate species except for clear exceptions like the small-brained Homo naledi, we ought to consider them more as regional variations. However, it's evident that some groups, irrespective of their species status, managed to thrive more successfully than others, with our ancestors being among the survivors. This success is attributed largely to fortune and their behaviors, a consensus shared by experts in the field, and it's a recognition that today's populations must embrace to navigate forthcoming challenges effectively. Networking plays a crucial role, as does the capacity to adapt to changes, qualities that are undoubtedly vital as we confront challenges. Humanity will encounter the dilemma of either collaborating to address these crises or engaging in competition. The lessons from Neanderthals and Homo sapiens demonstrate that the groups which cooperated more effectively were the ones that persevered. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.